So my name is Laisan Kin. This is my gallery, Laisan Kin, in Boston. Um, I'm very, very lucky to have two amazing artists with me today, Jennifer King and Gian Shrewsbury. So That's Jennifer okay. King, um, living <laughs> in Los Angeles, California right now, um, born in Connecticut, uh, grew up in New Jersey, went to uh, University of uh, Colorado right. for your BFA. Yeah. You are, your medium is clay. And um, you've uh, shown in uh, a lot of galleries in the West Coast, mainly, yeah. right? Yeah. This is your first time showing in the East Coast. That's right. In Boston. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yay. Go Boston. Yeah. yeah. We got you first. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we have Gian um, living in Fairfield, Iowa. Um, you uh, went to Kansas City, uh, Kansas City BFA, and then Cranbrook um, for your MFA. Uh, you, your, your medium is painting, and um, you are currently the uh, assistant professor at uh, associate professor. Uh, associate professor, sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Um, yeah, at the University of Maharashi. How, what, what is it? International. Maharishi International University. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You. I like the microphone. You. <laughs> yes, you do. It feels kind of Reclaim silly. Reclaim that power. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So um, y you have exhibited quite extensively. I, yeah, from your resume, you have uh, shown re um, in New York uh, quite a few times, um, and also where you work in uh, Iowa, um, and I think in West Coast as well, right? Nationally. Well, I think um, I think who best to talk about uh, yourself and your work than you, right? So who would like to start? You have the microphone. Yeah, I don't have a microphone yet. <laughs> well, um, hi, thank you, Lesson. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, it's so sweet to see all these faces that I that are here that I haven't known and that I'm meeting, and then people I haven't seen in years, and um, people who I love. So, um, and I'm so grateful that Lesson matched us up because I just love. Jen's work and Jen and thank you adorable Same. son <laughs> um, sitting here in the audience mm -hmm. um, but yeah uh, I was so excited when um, my son and I connected and um, and then when she paired us um, together it seemed like a really exciting match and it's only been more exciting getting to know you and seeing the work unfold for the show and um, then seeing the work in person which I hadn't ever seen Jen's work in in person so there's I, I imagined it to be this textural and layered and um, dynamic and interesting and funny and and um, vibrant and the colors are just so um, they're both, they have so much depth in the layering, but then they also have these kinds of like, you know, the vivid nature of them. So, um, anyway, I, I, uh, I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about some of your, your work? My work. So, um, this series? this series. So I tend to work in a series, um, in general and, I, I sort of always have a packed studio in terms of my process. It's just like, um, I, I think of a body of work as like one piece kind of. So um, it's, it's a very generative, um, um, rep repetitive, um, uh, open kind of playful space, the way that I make work. Um, it usually, you know, it's one thing to the next in terms of what I was doing before, and there are always things that are like lying around that join the party um, when a new body of work is started. I try not to make work for a show. I try to just have work going and, um, and then choose when the time comes. Um, and so in this, sometimes I have to trick myself. <laughs> Um, to do that, um, meaning to not think of, well, you, you know, there are practical things that ha come up in terms of um, knowing a space, if I do know a space, like the floor plan and all of that. Um, but in terms of this show, I, I was coming out of uh, having a show at OYG Projects in New York, and I 
had made um, big pieces that were connected to clothing uh, that was moving around the space, um, so activating the space in that way. And I was also thinking about this show, this show while that was happening. So I started making these drawings that are not here, but they were kind of coming off of the idea of the dress that was only on, like the painting just existing on the body in the dress form, um, and then what might go with those outfits and that kind of thing. And so um, the, the drawings were very exciting to me, and they were like specifically this piece over here, the big dress, and the dress on the other side of the wall were, uh, and then these smaller, actually the 30 by 40 paintings back there with the boots and the telephones hanging off of them. Um, the idea being that the figure might be embedded in the dress or um, that the dress actually is not just something you could wear, but it's also something that could be the figure, um, which always is running through my work. So there's a figurative nature that exists. The fig figurative nature of it g extends to the actual surface of the piece or the substrate. So the substrate in my head is also kind of a body. So it's a running thread that's always kind of being played with um, that is also extended to just being able to make an accessory that a body might hold that would join an outfit. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I was making this body of work and thinking about those things and then, you know, like big figures that maybe could wear the outfits. Um, but also, and be protected by the accessories that are surrounding them, um, the kind of, in a not literal way, but you know, a, a doll or a, or a, a big um, paper doll that is very flat and can have new outfits imposed on them and you can grab different accessories. So a very kind of modular, um, interchangeable um, idea of, matching things up and then separating and coming back together. Um, and then um, things like the eyelash motif that came in, that was, it, it became, it was just a pattern I started playing with. And I'm pretty um, just intuitive in the studio. So um, I'm not really, even though everything forms into something that is recognizable, I don't uh, think about that. I am often not thinking about the thing that you might think I'm thinking about. Like, I'm thinking about pattern that's that's just happening, and then their eyelashes, and that feels right. You know, I might have tried four other patterns before that that were under that, and they didn't feel right. And maybe in my head they were they seemed right, but they weren't. So the eyelashes came in, and then in my head I'm also thinking of that as like, okay, a clothing line. Like in a clothing line, you have um, you have a, a fabric that is in most of the items in that line. So you'll have eyelashes coming in somewhere and then you have a few where the eyelashes aren't there because those are important moments where the, it doesn't all match. Um, so those are kind of some of the things that are driving me through the work. Um, another thing I'm um, like with this repetition of making a ton of work and having the repetition sometimes of even the same shape over and over, um, not as much in this work, but still, you know, the repetition of something that's the same and then allows for differences to come in. Um, that is a way of getting out of my head and into my body. It's a way of having a job to do and then allowing for um, all the other things to come in and surprise me. Um, it also is a way for me of kind of thinking about how something recognizable might become abstracted, but then form back into something recognizable. So um, that's a game I play in the studio as well. Um, I mean, I could keep talking, but I feel like maybe I should let Jen say it's something. Great. It's <laughs> It's like so wonderful to hear you talk about your work because it's been, one of the really nice things about this show was that um, it was such a surprise to hear from Lysen and then the pairing with Gyan has just been so great, not only because I feel like like I love your work and I love getting to know you, but it's like I think the, the whole process, like I've gotten to know your process like you were talking about, and I think your process is such an 
interesting one, you know, and you're so, um, like your work is so much about the process, if that, yeah. And I think that really comes through. And um, I don't know, just kind of, you know, keeping up with, with you and your process as I was working through my pieces has been really, really interesting and unique experience. So it's been very, it's been wonderful. Um, and then we finally got to meet yesterday, which is great. Um, so yeah, my work um, in ceramics has gotten sort of, in terms of scale, has sort of increased in scale as I've been um, continuing to work in that medium. I come kind of like, I mean, my background is coming um, sort of a cross between working more sculpturally and with like a, the functional form. Um, so I've always kind of been exploring that, um, the sort of um, language of those two, you know, I, I don't know, just sort of that crossover between the sculptural and the functional and the, the vessel form, which I, you know, have focused on um, the most is um, such a, to me, such a, um, like endlessly interesting one because um, it, of course, there's so much history to that form, and um, you know, as my work has become more painterly in the last years, um, just exploring kind of you know the history of that form, and um, you know, I, I also feel like my pieces are very autobiographical, and to me, they're like they're very personal, actually. Um, and so I have a lot of fun with them. And um, I think they're sort of maybe a, a little bit of like, they're, they're fun, but they're also, um, you know, in a way maybe slightly jarring, um, which is kind of, um, I don't know, that's like sort of the, the path that I'm on. Um, but, but uh, and then I've been weaving more and more like kind of actual written words into the pieces that are on the insides of, um, of a lot of them, um, which are meant to kind of evoke um, a little bit of maybe even confusion and um, just sort of spontaneous thoughts that we might have through the day. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know, playing, playing playing off of like all of these sort of, this sort of like psychological landscape of living in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, of course they're also very female and, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a mother and I teach at an all girls school. So I feel like there's a lot that comes into the work in terms of my, my roles as a teacher of all these, you know, high school um, girls and um, being a mom of two. Um, also very much plays into the imagery on my work, um, which was also, of course, very interesting because I think in terms of Gian's work that her work also has that kind of feminine energy. Um, so, I, but, but different also, of course, you know, so they kind of play off each other really um, nicely in that way. Um, and it's been really exciting to have this body of work here on the East Coast where I grew up and yeah. just coming back to, you know, for the first time with my work has been yeah. great. So I think um, for me, um, that we, I like to see the similarities, but also like to see differences. Yeah. So in terms of how you portray the figure, there's no face, mm -hmm. but you. Right. It's all face. It's all face. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, yeah, eyelashes. Well, that's the interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. eyelashes yeah. were such a coincidence. Oh, tell, yeah. tell everybody. Um, <laughs> we hadn't with the, seen yeah, with each title. other's work. I mean, we knew each other's work, but yeah. we couldn't see what we were making. Right. Um, and then we... Um, do I need this? Do I need yes. this? Um, and then we... <laughs> Jen sent me pieces from the sh for the show and I was like looking around my studio going what is going on with all yeah. these eyelashes because like, for me it was a new thing I hadn't right. been thinking about eyelashes that's really amazing um, yeah. and I mean I mean I the, think yeah um, we were throwing away throwing away throwing around 
different terms in terms yeah. of titling our show that were kind of, I feel like, kind of like uh, speaking about the idea of like um, protection, right? Right. Like that was like a word that really came up as like, you know, like sort of shields and protection and mm -hmm. those kinds of ideas and that eyelashes, right. They decorate and they protect. Right. So we were, so we were sort of like, we were like, well, we can't ignore these eyelashes. That has to be the root of the title. It makes the most sense or it just felt right. And so then we were passing things back and forth yeah. and you were like, what do eyelashes do? It was in a text and I said, well, they decorate and they protect. And you were like, bingo. So yeah. then we started coming up with different yeah. possibilities um, of yeah. how to address that, but not have it be the only right. you know, thing. And so I think with a title, it's nice to have something that has a little bit of humor and has a s few different meanings. Uh, and yeah. we felt like lashing out was, yeah. was a good... Yeah, it became like this really kind of, I think, really fitting mm -hmm. metaphor for yeah. aspects of the work. Yeah. How about the color? Both of you, mm -hmm. saturation of color. Yeah. <laughs> and not just color, but like, really amped up mm -hmm. colors too. So. Well, I mean, I think of color as sort of a protector in a way. It's like a way of drawing a viewer in and it's also a way of pushing you away a little bit, the way that I am using oh. color, um, mm. kind of protecting, you know, abstractly the inside of the painting or, um, but also, and, and maybe, you know, the figure that's in the painting or, or otherwise, um, but also, you know, weird <laughs> color combinations or something that might be off-putting and also inviting at the same time. Um, there's a, the way that I choose colors often has to do with n nostalgia and um, instinct um, or just, you know, and it, but it's not always about liking or not liking. It's just like a feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, that's a really good way of putting it. It's about a feeling. I don't, it's weird. I, you know, there's certain things that happen, of course, in the studio that aren't like, they, they're a little subconscious or I, I um, and then the other thing about ceramics is that you're, for me, I'm always fighting to have really vibrant color. Like it's always like my aim because it's not always very easy in terms of the glazes and this and, and really achieving that. So, um, but yeah, the vibrancy and contrast of, of, of colors, of course, is like very important to get that that vibrant color. Um, I don't know. Well, I'm super interested. We were talking yesterday, just the nature of ceramics and the way that you're using color. I think um, it's interesting your process, um, the way, the fact that you put white glaze down mm -hmm. first, right, and then and also draw with a pencil, yeah, and then paint with underglaze. I mean, all of that is very interesting to me, I think, because the, there, there's still an element of what I can see is probably surprise for you mm -hmm. when they come out of the kiln. Yeah. Um, however many times you're firing them, but, uh, but I think there's this sort of control that you're able to, to gain, especially over the color. Um, yeah. That I think it's illuminating to hear that you put white down first. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is usually how I work. That all. I mean, I'm, I I love um, to kind of achieve some like depth also in terms of the surfaces. So I'm working with. Yeah, I normally will kind of like coat the piece after it's been fired in white glaze, and then I'm kind of like I I like to start with that white canvas, and then I actually paint. I I'll normally you know, draw in pencil on top of the glaze. So I have like pretty, pretty rough, pretty good idea of, um, of what I'm going to be depicting there. And then, uh, uh, then I will paint on top of the glaze, which is kind of like a little bit of a backwards process from what a lot of ceramic artists might do where they put the color down and then they put like a clear glaze on top. Um, so it's a little bit weird. Um, but I, there's something about just starting with that white canvas and then painting because then I'm also allow like I allow myself to also paint other glazes on top so there are unexpected results and I just I like the kind of to me a little bit of like the depth of surfaces and surprise that that 
you know, usually, hopefully, are like happy surprises when it comes out of the kiln. Um, and yeah, sometimes there are multiple firings if I don't achieve like the right effect the first time. And, and uh, you know. Great. What about animals? Both of you like animals, mm. <laughs> particular animals, like a cat. <laughs> Strange, also oh, snakes. We both have cats. cats on, on our, I have one or two pieces, yeah, with a yeah, one or two pieces. cat. Yeah, yeah. Snake. And snakes. Yeah, yeah, tell us about that. Well, for me, I think uh, part of what I'm aiming to like um, project is like uh, sort of, you know, our place in the world and um, bumping up against each other, bumping up against the natural world and how we, you know, where we are in that, you know, and. Um, finding, you know, a place, finding our place in that. I mean, I was just, and um, so I don't know. I feel like um, depictions of the animal world are just, you know, become these sort of metaphors for, for that. Um, and I mean, I think on one of my pieces, I have somebody who's like, you know, they're, they're kind of like unlikely um, juxtapositions of, the figure and natural elements, you know, for example, like a female figure who's like, has like a bone in her mouth or an octopus on her head or a flower in her teeth. Um, just that sort of, just e meant to, I guess, evoke that feeling of, um, of coming to terms with being, you know, being in the urban environment of Los Angeles and yet being in this like, world where we are completely dependent on each other and you know nature around us and there's also like a depiction of a, a woman who's like grabbing like the tail of her cat just you know the things that we do every day right to like like surround ourselves with to help ground us and you know um, those kinds of ideas uh, and um, there's also like you know it's kind of like I mentioned it's they're kind of autobiographical and um, there's it's kind of like a psychological kind of landscape um, and I think that also I think like at the root of them is like having grown up um, in a household that was very much about um, embracing art um, as a like it was like the the sort of the penultimate, yeah, it was sort of, I grew up with these parents who were both classical musicians and art was sort of everything in that household, which was wonderful. But it was also, um, there was also some like mental illness with a family member um, that was kind of became like very difficult to deal with. And I think that all of my work, like on some level always like reflects upon that experience. So I don't know, I think that something about these like weird, intense kind of juxtapositions like is a reflection of, of that. It just, I mean, it's not even on a conscious level always, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that in some way. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Um, I think it's like many layered for me with the animals. Um, part of it is maybe humor, part of it is like, what we do for fashion, like what people might do for fashion, like how you know they might make a pair a pair of boots out of a cat, or but also it could be, can you take your cat with you all the time? Um, <laughs> what if I could have my cat with me all the time? Um, more in a larger sense, maybe more like protectors, like snakes coming out of the arms, like they're protecting mm. this person or whatever this figure but then they also might be eating you know becoming this this figure might be becoming an animal might be part animal um uh they could be protecting they could be harming um then uh yeah so i mean part of it is is it's it's also just like maybe those are the clothing items that they're wearing you know because i'm always thinking about different outfits and how an outfit could be, look more or less like something yeah. so they feel like empowering so yeah it's there like there's like, an element of yeah. like superhero power yeah. you know that's that's sort of 
an indicator of power or, or something that, that, you know, a superpower that you have or um, that you can carry with you. Um, yeah. Yeah, confident, yeah, right. You could be shifting back and forth yeah. between, mm -hmm. yeah. So those are the kinds of yeah. things Hands that are coming up. Snakes right. Or Right, exactly. Like, because also, you know, like you're saying, I'm not really interested in defining a face yeah. or a personality through, you know, if the personality's coming out, it's through color and shape and mm -hmm. the outfit that they're wearing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not, so it's like I'm not interested in making hands or, you know, I'm more interested in, in less, you know, every time something moves toward, more toward defining a gender or a mm -hmm. uh, description of a person, I remove that. You know, it's mm -hmm. not interesting to me mm -hmm. um, yeah. in my work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Oh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you use a lot of black, and I wonder how you feel when you're painting black. Like, black is mm -hmm. such, like, so much, so such richness. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, that richness really sort of gets in my, mm -hmm. it's like, it feels very satisfying mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. using black. The contrast, you know, it's like settling down and also spicing up the colors. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very kind of formal place I am when I'm painting. You know, I mean, it's, it's instinctual and it's formal. It's like the stuff that I'm interested in while it's actually happening. All that other, like, imagery and possible, you know, content and all of that is like kind of brimming around and swirling and coming in and out and and usually coming later or solidifying later. Um, so like something like black, it's it's a feeling that um, that feels really right and kind of settling and um, grounding. At what point in the paintings does the black arise? No, not in the beginning at all. Mm -mm. Not in the beginning. And usually, uh, the paintings, whether or not they look layered, they have a lot of other stuff underneath. So there's no planning that goes on. It's just the running between the many paintings at once and them sort of building on each other. So um, the black, I mean, um, that dress was a million colors before that. Um, a lot of the time the black, you know, I'll even say, okay, no black in this one, mm -hmm. and then I'll make the opposite decision. <laughs> everything has black in it, and then, you know, everything in between, so, um, yeah. I, I have a comment that's more than a question, because I really think that the two of you play really, again, really easily together. Yeah. 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 I think about um, art history, because I'm thinking about Egyptian walls, yeah and Greek urns and the, the storytelling that's happening in the urns and the, the motifs that are happening, yeah. like almost like the sun god or, you know I mean? We're looking yeah. at Ra symbolism, you know? But it's so current. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say it's yeah. a really nice yeah. juxtaposition, yeah. although I don't love that word. <laughs> Thank you. I actually thought that when I saw the, um, I mean, that's a very perceptive comment. Um, and, and I, when I saw the installation shot of when just this piece and those two, um, yeah. I, I thought that immediately. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It, totally. Yeah. And, and I was just at the Field Museum the other day in Chicago, and there were these beautiful Egyptian, you know, objects and and drawings and paintings and yeah. I again all of that was like resonating so even the proportions feel like mm -hmm. you know you have these purposeful yeah. proportions in the paintings it's almost like you know mm -hmm. it's like a gridded thing that's like yeah. there yeah 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 it's really perceptive I mean I was going to catty quarter follow up on that question because you know artists you're always looking for things and like art history is loops Sure. And there's another loop, and that's 1930s Picasso Matisse, and those yeah. ghosts, who, who, and they were looking at the Egyptian yeah. masks, yes. of course. Yeah. Exactly. But that kind of, that, you know, and the cutouts, you know, so he's in the south of, Matisse yeah. is in the south of France, making these cutouts when his daughter's being tortured by the Nazis. And so there's this element of timeliness, like why does this work look fresh if we're looking at Egypt, if we're looking, you know, like, so I think that formal 
language is kind of interesting yeah. in terms of the choices you're making. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and those are huge influences, you know, all of that. But I feel like, um, I don't, I mean, in terms of conversations, I always think of it as conversations in your studio, you know, that you're having yeah. with history, with what's happening around us now, what's current, what's past, and we're all sort of chewing on these things at different points uh, in a more prominent way and less, and it's sort of um, all the, I mean, all of that is very relevant to the work, though, and what's, what's being... Um, what's coming up and then you're, you know, when something comes up and then you start looking at it again, um, you're like, you know, it becomes uh, very relevant suddenly in your work. Something like Matisse has, you know, and the cutouts, they've been relevant in my work for, since I was, can remember, you know. Have you seen his, um, you know, using the chapel, the, where the, um, the priest's stole? Yes, where it's like yes. Flattened? I love them, yeah, mm -hmm. I love those. Thank you. Um, uh, both of your works are, are amazing, but I am, I'm looking now at Guillaume's paintings hanging as un, you know, unstable, un, um, you know, stretched. Unstable elements. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of like this offering of like a disguise, or it's really like clothing, like they're, they're, it's packable, it's wearable, it's tryonable, um, and I really like that. Um, with the shoes and the necklace and all the the other objects, it's like the the accoutrements, yeah. like the accessories that are interchangeable with the figures and and their outfits. And um, it just there's it's so playful and watching your work evolve over these years, and it just they look great. And I love especially the grommet hanging for these. I guess it's all of those ones, but they, it makes so much sense. And and with your your pots, I mean, it's gorgeous. Um, really like full of humor, um, fun. There's like a cartoon element that is like really like bold and it looks great. So congrats both of you. Thank you. Yes, the flexible nature is something that I really like. I, I, for the reasons that you're saying, Crystal, and then, you know, like the idea that it could even, I remember Lisa Maxson, like um, she was talking about and wrote about how they could almost be shelter, you know, become shelters or something. Like, you could get inside of them, you could wear them, they could have multiple purposes, they could go inside and outside. Yeah, so it's like the, right, so, um, so yes, yeah, so down to the, so it's like, that's sort of what I, it feels right right now, at least, to be making these big pieces on the flexible, you know, because they're also sort of like flags and um, just the fact that they could take different, they allude to taking different shapes and that they could be worn possibly, you know, that kind of thing is exciting to me. I have a, a quick question uh, actually for Jen. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at this, this one urn with the cookie monster on it. I'm assuming that is the cookie monster. This one? Yes. Or it's cookie monster-esque. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. <laughs> So, see why you would say that. When I look at it, I sort of see that, and I guess my question was, if I were describing it to someone, it would kind of be something like Cookie Monster-esque or something like that, with a rainbow, with all the, and it would come across as being very, almost purely whimsical. But when I look at it, it doesn't give me a, a sensation of pure whimsy. There is something, right. whether it's the color of the background slash sky or whatever, but there's something about, and I would say that about several of the works, like yeah. the, if you described it casually, it would sound whimsical in a way, but it reads much more serious. And I'm just kind of curious how you either try to achieve that or how you think that that's achieved or whether you think that's you know, purely a personal <laughs> reading yeah. of the work. That's a, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting observation. Um, you know, I, I definitely um, want there to be a lot of humor in them, but it, I guess in a way it's like a dark humor maybe. Um, I think, and, and I don't know why that is, I think it's just um, a reflection again of um, 
some of these experiences that I've just had, you know, like I was mentioning that I, you know, yeah, just having come from this house that was like very um, wonderful, but also like went through some very jarring times that were really formative for me. And I think um, the pieces just continue to reflect that. Um, but like I said, just also, you know, sort of our place in the world to me is just this incredible juxtaposition every day. Um, that particular piece is called, am, am I going to get the title wrong? Mount, Mouths, Sun, I can't remember the name of it. Mouths, Mountains. Mouths, Mountains. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I should look. Um, Rainbow, Mouth, Mountains, and Moons. So, um, you know, it's, it's a little different maybe from the other pieces because it's kind of very landscapey. Um, and there's like a symmetry to it. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of about, you know, our, our place in the landscape and our, and again, yeah, it is, it is intentionally sort of, this, they're sort of darkly humorous. I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a great observation, I think. I think I'm aiming for them to be, to be that, that way, yeah. With pills, yes. yeah, I do. Sw and that one's titled "Swallowing the Night." Yeah. Um, so that has an edge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it does. So, so, yeah, there's some um, underneath, you know, uh, kind of slight sadness, maybe. Um. Yeah. Melancholia. Sure. I mean, and then the other thing I guess I would say is that the um, I started making these larger pieces during um, the pandemic. Um, like it was a kind of oddly very, very like, um, I think my work kind of transformed during that time. And I mean, these form, not, you know, I had, I think this is like my second body of work um, that I've made since then, but they have, so, but during the pandemic, they kind of became these larger vessels that became very painterly. And um, I think that I do also feel like the, a lot of the imagery is still like continues to be kind of reflective of that time because mm -hmm. it kind of grew out of that time, you know? And for me, it was like r actually, despite like all the scary stuff that was going on and I was at home and my kids were on, you know, doing distance learning and all that awful stuff. Um, it was also super productive for me. I spent so much time in my studio and it definitely like helped me so much to have that time in my studio. And, um, and I think the imagery also is maybe kind of like, like, you know, dark um, a little bit because they came out of that experience. Um, and again, humor just in my everyday life is just like so important and it's like important to me as a person. And um, so I, I think I really want the pieces to have that element of humor too. So, um, so yeah. Mm. You know, that kind of symbolic darkness in it, but I, but, you know, I'm suggesting the word mystery in them. Yeah. Or a question that you created, there were questions in your life at that time of making it, and then, you know, so that right. those questions you know, bubble up in the art. That's a great, that's a great point. Yeah, the, that, to use that word mystery, there's definitely a lot of mystery that goes, that is, yeah that is in the depictions and in the whole process. And, um, yeah, there's definitely dark work out there. Yeah. You know, this is, this right. Me, it's kind of dark work. Yeah. I think I had, um, I'm trying to remember now. I had a friend who described them as just, there's like a sense of desperation. Mm -hmm. So maybe that, you know, a little bit. 
Um, yeah, I don't want them to feel super like heavy and dark. I guess that's also why there's humor in them. But um, but yeah, certainly mystery and like there's, they're even a little mystical. I think I have crystals on some of them, and you know. Um, I don't think of myself as a super sort of like new agey person or anything, but I think, again, just like I was saying with like the cat and the, you know, the animals and the depictions of flowers and, you know, um, it's just like to me, like these touchstones of things that we look to, right, in our daily lives to maybe. Yeah, but that like also speaks to the idea of just being human. Like yeah, we're not, sure. We're just going to have all this. Yeah, right, right, right. The daily, our, our day to day, and our, yeah. you know, and our like little like the messiness, the like, messiness, and maybe like the little like seconds or moments of like, I don't know, transformation or clarity or you know, and how those things can just like happen so quickly or, you know, like a, a door opens that and makes it really relatable too because everybody has it. Everybody feels these right. moments, right? You know, that are like, you know, a little bit mysterious or dark. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 And I think also again, like with the words that I write inside them, they're very much also about that. They're just about like a thought, right? Like a fleeting thought or like a mystic like a confusing sort of mysterious thought. And there a lot of it is not meant to be a lot of the, the and those are also the titles, right, that I write inside of them sometimes. They're not really always even, there's not even that much of a correlation necessarily. And I kind of like that. Um, I don't know. I just, there's something about the, the confusion that happens every day or in certain moments of our day. I think you guys both have. Yeah, I love that the, the, they both have that playful quality. I mean, yeah, both are. Well, and I think that's like in in a different in different ways. It's in our both in your process as well, allowing for mm -hmm. you know words to come in and sentences that don't necessarily directly match up with the imagery, and mm -hmm. allowing um, the drawing element and the glaze to drip and all of that stuff is, you know, there's this play between control and right. And, not having control and allowing the elements to take place. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's something playful about that. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> I have a practical question. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked about this, but who knew he was Nepo? They're not made by, I, I purchased them for the three of us. <laughs> I got them at like a little boutique in San Antonio. I don't know who made them. I know. It was too perfect. I had to, yeah. I know. I love it. It looks like it's something that you would have, you would have actually made. Yes, if I made jewelry, I might have yeah. made it. <laughs> Haven't done that yet. great question. Um, well, for me, it's, um, you know, it starts with building the form, of course, and for me as a ceramic artist, sometimes that means um, sitting down and sometimes I will actually use the wheel and throw just like sections of a piece and then I will 
um, also coil build a lot of the pots. So sometimes it's a combination of those things. And that's kind of very much in the moment, or I will often just hand build the whole piece. Um, and um, it's a rather long process. And then um, I don't always have an idea of how I'm even gonna paint them at all at that point. I usually don't. Sometimes I'll have like, you know, a couple ideas in my head, but they're pretty loose. Um, and then I was telling Gian yesterday that um, I have a background also in working as a graphic designer and an art director is something I used to do. And so I'm very, very comfortable and kind of quick in Photoshop. And so I've started sometimes even after the form is built, I'll take some photos and I'll play around in Photoshop with some ideas of imagery, which I've like grown to really love that because it's just so quick and easy for me to try out different things um, on like my tablet. Um, and uh, once I, you know, once I get the piece back, I talked a little bit about how I'll usually like coat it in a white glaze, so I sort of have this white canvas. Um, and I'm usually working on a couple of them at a time, or then I'll have some others that are in like a, you know, hand, they're still being built, so I'm sort of you know, with these pieces, it was all in the same period of time, of course, but I would be painting some and at the same time be building others, and there's a lot of back and forth and taking breaks between them and, um, you know, drawing on them and then, uh, and then, you know, putting, putting more layers of glaze and sometimes painting or firing them twice. Um, I have a studio that I is in my, is at my house, which I love. I found that I find that that's really worked really great for me um, because I can just be in there, you know, as much as I possibly can without ever needing to leave my home. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the process. Yeah. And I, I think I was talking about this, but maybe you weren't here yet. That, um, I I make. Well, it could be in 
size, you know, size is a parameter, and then the imagery, like, say, I want to make 10 handbags, um, or, you know, it might be in a, in a word, or it might be a lounging figure that I'm going to repeat across, you know, 20 canvases, and then I get to go back into them with all the variety in the world. Um, it might be um, that I'm going to make, you know, a bunch of these dresses that are coming out of the 20 drawings that I did and I'm going to sort of, I don't ever plan the paintings, but they're sort of being born out of that. So I don't take the exact drawing and go with it, but I have them around. Um, so usually it's in, yeah, it's like in a composition or in, um, you know, an accessory or a clothing item or, or the way that, or, or a variety of outfits or a color combination mm -hmm. um, and then and then they build you know like I was saying like the eyelashes come in and then I say oh they most of them will have eyelashes now okay I don't want that there you know so it's, it's never a, it's almost never like a one thing and it's done it's a kind of a, a process yeah. just a practical question do you on the ones that are not stretched do you sew those edges them first or do you paint first? So I buy them like that. Uh -huh. um, and I buy them in all different colors. Sometimes I buy the canvas without the grommets and the sewing and I've done it myself, but I actually prefer the kind of manufactured nature of it. It's something that I, it's like something to respond to. Mm -hmm. I like things that are made kind of, I just find that I like um, to manipulate that and to have that be something that's kind of constant. And and that's more, right. it's it's a parameter, yeah. yeah. It's so the surface is the size is the manufactured quality. Because everything else that I do is so kind of wonky. I like having that kind of stability of the regular manufactured. Uh, it's a funny thing. And then, or like, for example, I was making these dresses with my mom, and my mom is like super precise, and um, you know, she, everything she makes is just perfect. And so then I get to go to town on it. And this is the sort of edge of the crispness that then can get a little manipulated or wonky from my touch. I, I really respond to that. That seems to be a nice uh, So are these just regular canvas? They're canvas and they're, I like the colors that they come in and they just kind of infuse the work with a particular something. All of these are pink on the back, yeah. Oh, okay. um, so when they come in, they bring in a life, you know, that color can do, you know, so it starts the game. It's like they're purple, I have, I have them in all different colors, so purple, orange, when I'm picking, I order a bunch, and then I say, what colors are, what am I going to do now? And with these, I happen to do four pink ones, um, and that sort of started the game. Um, there was a practicality to needing to have uh, this work with, I knew it was all coming here. So there were some practical concerns um, with this, with that. So, so those are the kinds of things that, that I might do in, in a practical way. Like I have room for the four of them all. I'm going to start them all on pink. I know that I want to hang them together, that kind of thing. So you don't even gesso them? It looks like you just. I do gesso. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do gesso them. I also stretch them on the wall like in weird ways so that they become a shape. I mean, not weird ways, but I just, I, I hang them hot on the wall and then they get a, their shape starts to just twerk a little bit, you know? And that's like another thing that I, it, it brings out the objectivity of them, I think, in a way. Um, oh, thanks. There was a question back here. No, I was just, you know, thinking about objects, you know, like the paint, another nice pair is like painting on the vessel, but then also, you know, your, your paintings as objects, like, right. like something that's very interesting, like the yeah. edges are painted. Right. It's like, you know, it's a shoe, but it's also like you can pick up the whole exactly. painting of the shoe. Yeah, and I really do think of corner to corner, back to front, but whatever you're see, not seeing, seeing, it's just part of it. So um, I do think of the paintings as all good. So thank you. Oh, well, we are uh, going over. trajectory is not 